So we're out here at our first location in Vinales, which is a more rural and remote part of Cuba. El proyecto comenzó con dos líneas, cultural y medioambiental. Y me dijeron, ¿y cómo vas a hacerte sostenible? Tienes que buscar una línea productiva. Por poco dejo el proyecto. Y ahora resulta que la línea productiva es la mejor de las otras dos. Si el hombre sirve, la tierra sirve. Un proyecto no institucional, que esta idea me surgió dada la necesidad que tenía esta comunidad de no tener instituciones culturales. Y bueno, la comunidad, para hacer un proyecto comunitario hay que ser primero un líder comunitario. Porque si la comunidad no te acompaña, el trabajo es por gusto. Y comencé tomándome un café con el talento que tenía esta comunidad. Tamborero, patalero. Patio de Pellegrin is run by a guy named Mario, who has the most incredible sense of community. And what he does with his property is tries to teach the next generation of artists about art and how to create things in this world. And I think it was really special to see that. Patio del Pellegrin kind of felt like the Garden of Eden. There's all these different animals that are getting along, and there's just this kind of energy in the air that's really positive. And it was a really warm and welcoming place to spend our day. To run around and kind of interact with all those different animals and try to make some cool photographs was really fun. I love working with animals. So inspiring, just all the things here and you know, all the people that hang out and do art and just have community. Y la cerámica la quemamos con leña porque la electricidad que estamos comenzando ahora para nosotros es muy cara. It's been an emotional day because this place was full of secrets and full of life. It was like a wonderland, I would call it. And we got to a place where it was like a little school for, for the kids to learn how to play with clay and how to build things, how to paint. And this place is such an amazing place because it's free. One of the things I noticed straight out of the bat, it was just the gallery. We were just amazed at the fact that all these paintings were so good in such a remote place outside of the city that not too many people get to see. And we were fortunate enough to be able to see them. Esto es un taller que tenemos aquí de secundaria. Esos niños trabajan como si fueran artistas, porque mira los elementos y la fijación que tienen en el entorno que están diseñando aquí, la calle y el hogar interiormente. ¿Por qué hacen eso? Porque no están perdiendo el tiempo ni internet, ni tablet, ni celular, ni el jueguito de mejor que no lo tengan. Por eso hacen esas cosas. They hold classes for kids, they hold classes for adults. A lot of people actually hitchhike here just to take these classes and just to be involved with this art and hopefully have their art sold. <laughs> My real name is Stephen John Irby, and my Instagram name is Steve Sweatpants. I am a native New Yorker. I'm from East Flatbush, Brooklyn. I didn't take any photography classes. I was just really into just looking at family photos. I feel like that was one of the most sentimental moments to me in my life. When I turned 25, it was really important for me to find a passion and not be concerned about making money. I eventually fell into photography because of music. I decided to really hone in on my skills and I bought a film camera and that's when I really found myself into photography. Street photography would be the easiest way for me to identify myself as a photographer and the reason why I love street photography is it's personable, intimate, transparent and I think these are all the aspects of photography that elevates it to the next level and makes it have more substance than just posting something on Instagram for a bunch of likes. We had the opportunity to give away 
cameras to these kids that were in part of a program that Mario created. And there was this moment where I saw two kids without a camera. And for me that hit home because just to see that these like two kids didn't get the same opportunities as the rest of the kids, it made me think about my own life. So I just gave them my cameras. You could see it in their eyes, like how happy they were. And the fact that you guys set up that opportunity, it really allowed me to get the chance to like give back. These kids don't know what Instagram is, don't know what Twitter is. They have very limited access to the internet and they've been wanting to do photography and teach photography um, and video, but they've never had the cameras or resources to do it. Mario is just sort of that community leader, that role model that almost anybody in life needs. And you can see it in his eyes that he doesn't do it for the money. He does it because the younger generations sort of keep the culture and we have to teach them that. That's something that I believe deep down inside that like we have to teach the younger generations about who our grandparents were, who our parents were. There's people like him and, and people that, who, are, who are contributing to a bigger cause that really inspire me to work hard. Yeah. 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 When they bust it open, usually you gotta get like a spoon to scoop it out, but shout out to Freddy for chopping it up for us. Check it out. I'm out here with Ovec and Moneris, and we're gonna set up a portrait shot that I think we have a really good setting for. I'm gonna use the 24 to 70 G Master and the A7R2. Our day it was full of emotion, and I think it has been one of the most inspirational days that I've had so far. They had farms, history, animals. It was just like surreal. Like I kept saying to myself, how can this place even exist? On the next episode of Through the Lens Cuba. Our tour guy, Yan Yao, when he brought us to the Cuban plantation, I've never experienced something like that in my life. We had a pig that was killed the day before and was cooking for six hours, and it was the most delicious pig I think I've ever tasted. To see that whole process and to walk by and just meet the people who are working on the tobacco farm, it was a pretty like humbling experience.